Hey everyone, Chris, the Thrift Shop Plus here with another What Sold on eBay video for you today. Once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler with 30 years of reselling experience. Uh, these items have been donated to our eBay shop. I am the hub manager here at the American Cancer Society. So definitely go down there and check out the eBay store and pick something up. And if you're local to the Los Angeles area, uh, we have free local pickup, and like I said, 100% goes to cancer research. So once again, I appreciate everyone's support. These videos are basically the things that we have sold. Uh, there's lots of great information in here. Like I said, I've been a reseller for over 30 years, so I have plenty of information to share with you. So you want to actually get through the whole video because there's a lot of stuff here today. As a matter of fact, I think this is probably going to be one of the longest what's sold on eBay videos that I've ever done. So uh, there's going to be lots of great information here. So uh, definitely click the like button if you enjoy information, if you want to learn, because the more you learn the more you earn. So that is definitely uh, my slogan here on the channel. And so uh, let's get right into it. Now, if you have any questions, now that we're doing this on a live show, so if you're watching this on the back end, we're going to probably have some questions. So you're going to learn a lot more uh, than you would uh, normally on a normal show. So uh, we're going to get through all these different items. And so if you're watching on the live show, definitely leave a question uh, in the chat and hopefully we'll get to you as soon as we can so enough with that let's get right into all these items we have up first is this antique civil war brooch locket uh tin type artillery men uh, buttons and a uh, huge shout out to don the auction professor who helped me kind of price this and kind of determine what this was uh, this was an older civil war locket i'm uh, not quite sure exactly what the rank is or anything this was actually very small as we can see here it was broken i think it was a locket at one point and uh also you know people were talking about the the um, uh the buttons here also the buttons these buttons go for about you know 10 to or five to the ten dollars a piece as we can see here uh, what was it? I think it was Great Army of the Republic or, or something like that. And it's Gar. That's what the, the tag is usually in the titles uh, for these. You might come across these every once in a while. Uh, the buttons are probably going to be a lot more common than the actual uh, brooch, I want to call it. Even though uh, I'm not quite sure uh, if it's a brooch, though. I think the backer, as, it, if, as a matter of fact, if you are watching this on the back end, let's see a photo of this thing real quick. Uh, if you were walk, watching this on the back end, do you think this was a locket or a brooch? Because it does have a kind of a swivel back, but, you know, it's kind of, it's really fooling because, you know, it has the two little notches here uh, on the on the top and bottom. And Civil War stuff, we've we've gotten another thing this year for Civil War of, uh, oh man, I wish I remember what it was, but it went for good money. It's actually crazy to think that people would donate stuff like this, but they do, you know, they don't have... Uh, the information as a matter of fact uh this was in the bottom of a donation box someone donated it a bunch of things and uh it was framed so they didn't it wasn't like they didn't know it was there because it was a huge frame that this thing was in and i actually had to, to take it out of the frame to to do some uh, research and things like that so it's just crazy to think like you know um and the same with the other Civil War thing. It was a whole. It was a frame full of medals, and all those medals were legit. They weren't in perfect condition. Some of them were uh, missing some elements, but you know, right there, it's kind of crazy. Uh, we want to welcome some some uh, chatters here in the live chat. We got uh, Marikeach Seven. Good morning. We got Crypto Lock XRP. Good morning. Uh, Bitcoin's uh, pumping this uh, weekend, which is very nice. Uh, the portfolio is looking really good. I'm liking that. Uh, this sold for $149, like literally maybe like five or six hours after it was posted. Um, you know, that was probably right around the wheelhouse of what these things go for since they're so small. Uh, if there was any historical significance to this piece, it probably would have went for more. Um, I think a famous, if it was a famous person uh, in the war or a general or someone with a higher rank that I could have identified, uh, this thing could have gone into the thousands of dollars. So just... Keep, a, keep your eye out for this kind of stuff. Uh, this kind of stuff is out there and about. Uh, so uh, definitely stay on the lookout for this stuff. Uh, next up, we have this Hermes silk skirt, uh, silk skirt, silk scarf, excuse me, uh, navy blue skull. 
<laughs> it's too early in the morning to <laughs> be bumbling the English language, but uh, whatever. Uh, pattern crowns, as you see here. We've talked about uh, Hermes scarves in the past, and uh, we've we've been getting actually a few of them into the, um, I think it's the Stockton area, as you can see here. This has obviously been folded for a long period of time because the fold marks are pretty uh, dominant. These things are usually made out of silk. Now, you can steam these but I, I highly suggest like you know what you're doing uh, if you ever want to kind of steam these for photos and stuff like that but to be honest like these things sell regardless uh, the wheelhouse of Hermes scarves can range anywhere from uh, 60 to $200 on up uh, usually $100 is usually the kind of uh, average you're going to get for something that's in decent condition mint condition uh, look out for these i think we did actually we had the name here that's what it looks like hermes as we can see here it's uh, very well stitched and uh, that's one of the things and we'll talk about authentic uh, authentic oh, fuck, geez, authentic stuff uh, later in the show and uh, how to determine uh, whether or not because we got some purses uh, on the back end of the show and if you watch all the way through, uh, I'll give you some pro tips on how to determine if it's uh, a piece is authentic, or at least give you the tools necessary to at least take it to the next step. Uh, we took a best offer for this one, I think, for uh, $100. Uh, we got Adam Exploits in the house. We got Lauren Cohen, Landshark Picker. What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you guys are having a great Memorial Day morning. I thought I'd jump in and do this. I usually do these What's Sold on eBay videos on Monday. So today's Monday, so here we go. Uh, once again, look out for Hermes. Like I said, you're probably going to come across a tie uh, other than a scarf. Uh, they do have clothing. Some of their um, cardigan sweaters go for hundreds of dollars. So just look out for that name. And just remember that uh, Hermes is definitely one of those um, bootleg pirated uh, companies. So just be... Uh, on the lookout for that stuff uh, next up we have this power converter this is a power bank portable charger this thing is a uh, 400 or four yeah 400 mega amps or milliamps i forget what that what that m a h is and i'm pretty sure landshark picker can tell me he's into electronics uh, uh, and by the way if you're into uh also uh what solds and, and and great videos definitely go and check out landshark picker he is in the comments uh, this Omni, this Omni charger actually was donated by a volunteer. There's a nice lady named Irma. Shout out to Irma who uh, has a daughter who works for a major company that she's. <laughs> I guess she's always given stuff, uh, you know, for free swag stuff. And every once in a while, she'll bring in some really crazy things. And uh, this is one of them. Uh, we took a best offer for two hundred fifty dollars for this thing, if you can believe it. Uh, look out for these things. Like I said, I've known about portable chargers for a long time. And usually they go for like 20 bucks, 15 bucks, the little tiny ones. Um, but look out for these mega ones. They go for big bucks. And like I said, this Omni Charge, this is like a company I never heard of. When I first saw it, I thought, okay, this thing's going to be like a, a $25 thing. But when I scanned it, I was very surprised. So uh, that just goes to show you no matter how long you've been in this game, uh, you can definitely be surprised on some of these things. And uh, Adam Exploits is saying, I think it's pronounced Hermes, but I haven't had French for 40 years. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I have one language, English, and I can't even get that right, so that, that should show you something. Uh, we got Maui Delights in the house. How you doing? Are you from uh, Hawaii? That's really cool. Laura, Ke Laura Cohen says, good morning, working my car show booth this morning. Hey, great, cool. That's actually really cool. I used to go to a lot of, there's a lot of car shows here in Burbank, California. There's uh, one big one that comes up uh, every year at Johnny Carson Park. So power banks, definitely look out for these. Uh, they're crazy. If you if you didn't know about this kind of stuff, definitely click the like button. That would really help. Uh, let me know if you've ever heard of these power banks. And uh, Landshark Picker says milliamps. So there you go. Uh, next up, we have these Gucci slingback heels. These are ostrich. Uh, whenever you see uh, this kind of pattern, I don't know if I got a close-up. They're like these, almost like these little dimples. There's raised dimples. That's usually ostrich skin. Uh, now there's faux ostrich. Uh, that's There's a lot of that that's out now. But uh, if, you, if you need a keyword and you see this type of thing, usually you can find these in purses and, uh, and, and stuff like that. 
and ostrich actually goes for a lot of money but look out for this kind of pattern of it's almost like a imagine like leather shoes with crackling that have these little dimples on them uh and they're not they're not dimples where they're they're embossed in they're actually pop out so like they're they have a rough kind of pimply let's say yeah there you go pimply kind of feel to them um the real stuff goes for a lot of money the faux stuff doesn't does not um, I think I took a best offer for a hundred and something on these ones. We've had these for a while and they were very nice Gucci shoes. And uh, for the most part, you know, we talked about if an item is authentic. Usually if you look at the stitching, you look how well it's made. As we can see here, the stitching is just impeccable. The build quality is really nice. So that tells me that I'm 95, let's say 95, I would say 99, but let's say I'm 95% sure because... There are some very, very, very high-end fakes, though. Um, they're few and far between because most of the fakes are usually going to be of lower quality, and that's what you can usually tell. But uh, look out for Gucci slings. I, I seriously doubt you're going to find these at a thrift store, but you know, you never know. Uh, this is mostly like probably like an estate sale thing. And just remember, uh, ostrich. Uh, yep, that big bird. Uh, not big bird. Not big bird for some. <laughs> You haven't made shoes out of that guy yet. Uh, next up, we have this Grease Vintage Milton Bradley board games. Uh, we got a bunch of board games in uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, very nice uh, set and collection. Some of them were kind of hit and miss. There was a couple of gems uh, in there for sure. And so uh, definitely look out for those. Uh, we got Albert Bruana in the house. He says, what about a Hermes? I'm going to say it right this time, Adam, Ed, Adam Exploits. Hermes messenger bag. How about it? Um, I haven't seen one of those in a while. Uh, we got Krillin in the house. How you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Adam Exploits says, I'm not going to find that in a Goodwill rack with a rubber band around it. Yeah, probably for sure. Uh, so these Milton Bradley games, some of the vintage ones actually go for decent money. Um it's not uncommon to find this stuff at garage sales. As a matter of fact, I would definitely pick stuff like this at garage sales more than anything. Goodwill is going to overcharge you. Uh, estate sales are probably going to charge five to ten bucks for these things. So uh, when you're dealing with that kind of ROI, you want to make sure that you know what you're getting. Uh, you can probably bundle these up if you find these at an estate sale or if they're not already pre-bundled up. I always sell the ones that are that are worth less than maybe thirty dollars as parts because I don't have the time to go through every piece it's not worth my time and uh, for those who have been in this business for a long time you know what i'm talking about where your time is way, worth way more than a 20 dollars sale on a board game going through it maybe a half an hour to an hour just trying to figure out if everything's there sell it as pieces you know people will buy these things regardless uh, they'll look for the pieces if they need them let someone else do the work for you you know save your time save your energy if this was like a hundred dollar board game $80 board game I might consider going through the whole thing and make sure and it's all right putting it all together and Presenting it in a nice package uh, one other kind of bonus kind of information on the sale was the customer that bought this was very concerned about the corners and the the kind of uh, the condition of the box which was actually in decent condition It wasn't completely ripped. There was some signs of uh, wear so if you're listing board games just a pro tip to put the condition of the box somewhere in the title in the description which i did not uh, so i've noticed that uh, listing old board games people really want to know that information uh, other than the things that are basically uh, missing we got mary mcquain in the house how you doing she says uh, uh love grease saw that movie in the theater cool Yes, my, my family, my, my wife definitely loves that movie, and so does my daughter. Uh, we got Perla's Precious in the house. How you doing? And Mar <clears throat> Marikeet7 says, T Chris, time for some strong coffee. Yes, uh, though coffee's not, not a thing for me. I have a little bit of a toothache, and I, I don't know what it is with coffee really triggers that. So um, I'm definitely not doing coffee this morning. <clears throat> I got my milk. And that's <clears throat> that'll do it. Uh, next up, we have this Razor scooter. Uh, some of these, some people have seen these before in the past. Uh, this was this is actually a cool story. It was donated as a kind of a broken parts only piece, and uh, of course, I pulled it and I kind of put it all together, tested it out, 
uh, just to realize that <laughs> and this is going to be funny and I'm sure everyone has this story that I'm about to tell. They didn't charge the battery all the way. They didn't fully charge the battery. I don't know what happened. This was donated as broken. I charged it for 24 hours. The thing worked. Uh, we took a local pickup for $100 on this thing. Uh, like I said, someone got a great deal and it just took a couple times. Uh, I'm pretty sure those that are watching and uh, click the like button if you've ever had this experience where you've bought something and it was as simple as plugging it, <laughs> plug it into a wall and just turning it on like put like it was a switch or something as serious is like simple as like uh, flicking a switch for something. Uh, Krillin says he likes Grease 2 better. I don't think I've ever seen Grease 2. I think I could barely make it through the first one without throwing up. Sorry, I just it's not my jam. Uh, next up, we have this ladies Harley Davidson silver studded black leather motorcycle vest. Harley Davidson stuff sells very well. Uh, though, you know, don't get all treasure eyes when you see. Oh, yeah, that's a new thing. Treasure eyes. <laughs> I like that. Treasure eyes. Don't get all treasure eyes when you see Harley Davidson stuff. You know, you're not going to retire and go to Bermuda on Harley Davidson stuff, though. Uh, there's some uh, older shirts to look out for, especially ones with uh, hogs on them, pigs on them. Uh, those are must-pickups. Uh, some of them go for over $200, and Krillin is an expert at t-shirts, I would say. He knows what I'm talking about, old Harley Davidson shirts with the hogs on them. But anyways, this was a leather ladies' jacket. Um, this stuff still sells. Harley Davidson is, is very, very popular. If you can pick this stuff up at a, at a reasonable price, definitely do it. Uh, just know that, you know... There's tons of this stuff out there, so the really higher end, I don't want to say higher end, but the, the, the more valuable things are few and far between. Just do your research uh, when you're out on the field, because you never know what you're going to find. We got Flippin' Hustler in the house. How you doing? He says she needs to. She needs a cool rider. A cool, <laughs> cool I'm guessing that's a, a, a quote. Uh, Krillin says, always pick up Harley t-shirt. And uh, I don't want to say pick up every Harley t-shirt because some of them are, are not that valuable, but the ones with the hogs on them for sure. For sure, for sure. Oh, yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer was in Greece too. That's right. That's right. Next up, we have this Cartoon Network Steven Universe suspenders and the lanyard gelat. Uh, this is just an example of some of the good deals we have here on the American Cancer Society eBay page. Link is below. Uh, we have, there's lots of, uh, studios in Burbank here and every once in a while they'll donate to us. We've got donations from Warner Brothers, Disney, Cartoon Network. So that's actually another thing that's nice about coming into these shops. If you're in the Los Angeles area is you never know what we're going to get. We always have great stuff in the store. So don't think that I work there that we pull a lot of stuff. Uh, there is a lot of great stuff that actually goes out on the floor for resell resellers. And as a matter of fact, I should probably do a, a vlog about that sometime. Uh, but this was something that I thought, like, hey, why don't I try to sell this? Uh, $9.99, nice pair of suspenders. This was a donated item from Cartoon Network, so thank you, Cartoon Network. We really appreciate that. We ha They actually gave us a box full of stuff, and a lot of that stuff's actually still on the site. Little belts and trinkets is a big old collection of comic books from Steven Universe. Steven Universe, for the older folks like myself, it's basically a cartoon that is out now, and kids, kids like it, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of... One of those. I don't know if you if you're if you've ever watched some of the newer cartoons that are out. It's, they're kind of strange. They're they're really not right in the head somehow. Uh, next up, we have these antique pocket watches. This is from Louis Jacquat. Definitely look out for that name. Uh, these happen to be very kind of messed up. So if these things were actually in mint condition, were working, they probably could have gone for. Uh, anywhere between maybe 150 to $300 each or more. And uh, definitely look out for pocket watches. There's, uh, You know, anyone that's watched the Antique Roadshow, you know that there's some of those pocket watches out there that are worth thousands of dollars. Uh, this one this one's happens to not be that one. I mean, it's not made out of gold. Some of them are made out of solid gold, so look out for that. As you can see here, this thing is pretty damaged. Uh, the hands, the hour, and the minute hands are completely kind of stripped away. Uh, this would, this is a good lot. This sold for forty dollars, by the way. If someone fixed these up and refurbished them, they can probably get like you know, 
maybe $100, $200 for this, especially if they polish it up and fix them up nice. Actually, they probably can get more. Uh, so just saying, you know, we have all these kind of weird lots in, this, in the store. Uh, so this sold for $40. And like I said, uh, keep an eye out for pocket watches. Now, there's a lot of them out there that aren't worth that much. You know, there's a lot of newer ones. But look out for vintage ones. And uh, you might want to ask yourself, well, how do I know if it's vintage or it's a newer one? Usually, for the most part, unless it's kept in like a vault or, you know, someone passed it down from generation to generation in a box and no one ever used it. They're going to have some antique wear. And for those that have been in the business for a long time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Things just over time um, age, they oxidize, you know, they, they look old. Uh, now, there are people that can fake that kind of look and things like that, so I don't want to go down that rabbit hole and scare you guys any, any more than I should. But, you know, just uh, you know, fair warning, uh, look out for that kind of stuff because it is out there. Uh, next up, we have these postcards. <laughs> Krillin. Krillin says about the, the, cartoon, the cartoons being strange. He says that's because the millennial writers are strange. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. It looks like everyone's having coffee in the chat. That's great. Uh, next up, we have this vintage postcard. This is a harvesting grain. Uh, when you get older postcards, uh, always stuff keywords. Um, you know, I'll, you know, put horses, maybe cowboys. Did I put cowboys in this thing? I probably did. Yeah, I did. I put cowboy horse. Maybe cowboys should have been together. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyways, this sold for four ninety nine. Don't get super excited about postcards. There are a lot of them that actually go for over twenty dollars. But for the most part, you know, your your lindens and things like that are like going to be under 10 bucks. And uh, we ship these in a in a top loader. I think we is it a five by no, it's not a five by seven. Yeah, maybe it is a five by seven top loader. And we ship these in f first class. And so uh, a pro tip, if you go to hippostcards.com and that's correct, hip like, oh, we're so hip, hippostcards.com. You can pretty much, there's a huge database there. So if you're like, oh, I got this postcard and I want to know what it's worth, just look up the keyword. So if you saw this, just type in harvesting grain in there and it should show, uh, that database is, is amazing. And a huge shout out to Don, the auction professor, who uh, turned me on to that site. And as a matter of fact, you can sell through that site too. There's a lot of people that sell postcards through that site. I just use the site right now for reference. I don't have a lot of postcards, but if I had thousands of them, uh, I might consider putting those on there. So um, postcards, is it if you're looking for something that's very easily obtained, easy ship, easy list, postcards are where it's at. Next up, we have this Fellowship of the Rings, Lord of the Rings DVD. Uh, DVDs are actually still selling. Uh, look them up if they're sealed. Some of them go for a pretty good amount of money. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you right now. I'll get to that uh, question, Adam, in just a second. 95% um, of DVDs are junk. I'm going to tell you that right now off the bat. Uh, when you find them that are sealed, definitely scan them. Some of the older horror movies can go for a pretty good amount of money. Uh, there's something called, uh, what are they called? OOP. That's the, the, the acronym you can put in the title. OOP is out of production. There's a lot of DVDs that they don't make anymore. You're not going to find on Blu-ray. Uh, Anchor Bay. Is a, is a crazy company to look out for. It's a bolo company. Uh, they do a lot of horror movies and things like that, so look out for Anchor Bay and stuff like that. Uh, scan any box set that you find that's sealed. Any box set that you find is sealed. Uh, I found one uh, the other last year that went for $200, and it was just a random scan. Like, oh, what's this? Let me scan it. Definitely look up any sealed stuff, especially if you can get it for a reasonable price. There are some box sets that are complete junk, so that's why I'm saying always scan them unless you can get them for a reasonable price, and then you can just re, re donate them later. So if like I came across a garage sale that had, let's say, 10 DVD box sets that are sealed and they wanted two dollars a piece for them, I would probably just buy them without looking them up. You can always uh, lot them up, sell them for cheap. I always sell DVD box sets, or actually I always ship them in <laughs> Krillin, making me laugh. Uh, I always ship them media mail, so ship all DVDs, VHSs, v, uh, media mail if you can, if that's what you're into that. 
Uh, Adam Exploit says, uh, remind us when you'll be on the auction professor. Oh, speaking of the auction professor, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will be on the auction professor show tomorrow, which is an honor because, to be honest, he doesn't do much interviews with other resellers, so I feel honored and uh, with that. So definitely check that out tomorrow for sure. Uh, Krillin said OPP, <laughs> like the, the Naughty by Nature song, OPP. Yeah, you know me, but no, it's... Uh, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> out, of, out of print. It's OOP. Yeah, you know me. Uh, Krillin also says, look out for import edition box sets. Yeah, um, I think if, I've had some Japanese DVD stuff before, and it just it doesn't it hasn't sold. So uh, I think I know what you're talking about for sure. Um, import LPs and records is where it's at too, for sure. And Mary McQuayan says cool thanks for the heads up you're welcome hey and thanks for always being in the chat that's awesome if you guys are enjoying the show definitely click the like button we got lots of stuff to go through you're gonna learn something here for sure i know it i know it oh here's you're gonna learn something right here right here uh we have this 1957 framed coin dollar set now someone actually put this in a frame at some point in this history um looks like it's got a silver certificate back in the day you were able to actually exchange uh dollars for silver those days are long gone. Uh, that's why it's called a silver certificate. Uh, those days are long gone. I think Richard Nixon is the one in 73 or 74. For the older folks that are out there, re remind me, the gold standard was removed in the 70s. I want to say in the mid-70s, which meant, what meant that uh, our paper money is pretty much backed by nothing, just backed by the word of government. But back in the day, when you had a silver or gold cert I don't think there was gold certificates. I think they were just all silver. You can actually exchange this dollar at a bank or somewhere for a silver dollar. But back to what I was talking about. Uh, look out for all coins that are before 1964. Or actually, I should say 1965. So 1964 and below, uh, quarters, dimes, half dollars, dollars, they're going to be made out of 90% silver. So just be aware of that. So if you see 1964 dime, silver. If you see 1980 dime, probably nickel clad. 1965 dime, it's got a little bit of silver in it. I think 65 and I think 66, but I, I know for sure 65 has a little bit of silver in it, but it's not worth much. Uh, and also nickels aren't going to be silver unless they are from 1942 to 1945 those are called wartime nickels during world war ii there was a short supply of metals including nickel so they substituted 30 percent of the nickel with silver and uh, some of those in mint condition go for uh you know a dollar or two so if you have a whole bunch of those and they're even in circulated condition you can still make a lot of money off nickels so uh, i'm gonna say it once again so that you know nickels from 1942 to 1945 are called wartime nickels and look out for those because they got 30 percent silver in them and now you learn something and you know last time i posted this on instagram there's a lot of people that didn't know that um coins before 1965 are silver 90 percent silver and someone actually said like uh coins from canada that are th that are in the age range are 100 percent silver so i don't i don't I don't have any Canadian coins. Uh, next up, we have this Alien vs. Predator Blu-ray set. Uh, we get a bunch of uh, things coming in every once in a while, including DVDs and media, and sometimes I'll lop this stuff up. Uh, this sold really quick. This is actually a used set. The discs were in very good condition. Always look at discs. Make sure that when you buy this stuff that all the discs are there. You don't want to you know, get caught with listing an item and not looking to make sure that all the discs are, discs are there. Like, I've never done that before. That's a wink. I've done that before. Um, so definitely look out that. Uh, this was a, a nice set to put together. This sold very quickly for $19.99 plus $5 media mail. Like I said, um, I ship all my DVDs, VHSs, LPs, media mail, especially when they go over a pound. The customers like it, you know, and it's probably like maybe they have to wait maybe one to four days extra time to get the stuff. So usually people um, that are buying this stuff 
uh, realize it and just make sure you put it in your auction that you're selling stuff like that for sure uh, mary mcquain says i don't like coffee i'm rocking the pepsi zero hope i'm still allowed here absolutely i'm drinking milk zero so if i can drink milk zero you can drink pepsi zero though i'm a coke guy myself but not that kind next up we have this october 18th and 1989 newspaper from the san francisco earthquake uh, for those in california that were around at that time this was a huge deal um, I think the one of the bridges actually collapsed. Uh, it was actually part of the World Series. As you can see here, Quake postpones series game number three, the 1989 San Francisco earthquake. They have lots of great documentaries on this earthquake, especially the, the thing around the World Series. I think ESPN did one. Fascinating. Uh, during the game, they actually, I don't know if it was during the warm-ups, the pregame, uh, the earthquake happened and they have footage of the of the the stadium kind of shaking and the players kind of like what's going on and so uh the game was postponed i don't i don't remember how long before they they started back up but this is a piece of history um newspapers if you can get historical dates and a pro tip for those that haven't sold newspapers before la times new york times is where the money's at as far as historical things so uh, if you had like uh, the D-Day invasion from like a, just a regular old small town in Nebraska, it's not going to go as much money as a D-Day um, LA Times or New York Times front cover newspaper. So that's kind of my pro tip for you guys. Uh, also, another pro tip is a lot of the most famous events that have happened in the 20th century, they have made reprints of them in Los Angeles Times and New York Times. So just be very warned. If you see a newspaper that's completely mint condition and it's got the little side uh, feeder things, usually it's probably going to be a newer one. Though they had feeder machines in the 40s and the 50s. Usually, my thing is if it's got yellowing in it, it's the age thing again. Newspapers will, will yellow with age normally, unless they were like put, like I said, in, in an attic somewhere in the dark, you know, like in very protected that's what i'm saying like most part you're going to find uh stuff that's going to have yellowing the reprints are usually going to be, be like that almost like crispy uh, <clears throat> off white grayish you know what i'm talking about those that newspaper gray there's no newspapers that are that are uh white they're all like have this really kind of thin gray to them and uh i think i've rambled off too much about newspapers i'm sorry i, I tend to do that i have a lot of information <laughs> about all this kind of stuff uh, just I'm just downloading my brain. If you like that, definitely click the like button uh, for downloading. I'm like literally downloading my brain. Every little piece here is is something to learn. Uh, next up, we have this Robert Claregi. I don't know. I, I hate I hate these names. I can't even pronounce them. Uh, Oxford. These are women's. I didn't. I'm not very versed in shoes and clothing, but I did learn something about these shoes. When you see this kind of pattern, these are called Oxfords. I didn't know that. These little kind of weird uh, loopy and lacy kind of almost like holes and stuff. These are Oxford. That's the key word to use for that. Uh, these were made in France. They were made in France. And so uh, these sold for $49.99. And uh, these shipped. These actually were on the site for a while. I'm not a fan of shoes. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is what it looks like on the bottom. Pretty well made. Uh, I'm not a fan of shoes. I'm not a fan of clothes. I'm a hard's good collectibles kind of guy. So doing this is part of the job, but I'm trying to get excited and learn more about this kind of stuff because clothing for the most part, shoes for the most part, it's evergreen. Uh, you're going to sell a bathing suit in November for some reason. Well, I guess because of the earth. Yeah. That's why you sell a bathing suit in November because, uh, <laughs> in the winter time, Australia is having summer. Ah, oh, man, I'm I'm I forget it. Let's go to the next thing. Uh, next up, <laughs> next up, we have this woman's woman's. We have this children's Blu-ray lot of three. Uh, for those that are interested in, like, I got all these DVDs and I don't know what to do. They're they're not selling individually. What do I do? A uh, lot up the children's movies in DVDs. Those usually sell for a pretty good amount of money. There's lots of people looking for that kind of stuff. So definitely look out for that. Uh, if you're looking to kind of part out some stuff, you know, do a Disney lot, do a children's lot, 
uh, horror lot. Uh, those are lots usually actually do very well, sometimes action, drama. But for the most part, the money is in lotting up children's DVDs. And especially the highest thing is Disney DVDs. So if you can get like 10 Disney DVDs, all cartoons, and you go and lot them up, you can definitely work, uh, make some money uh, doing it that way for sure. So that's just a kind of a, another downloaded pro tip there for you. Uh, next up, we have this Campbell's Soup Andy Warhol crayons. This is actually pretty cool when this came in. It was actually buried in like a bunch of stuff that came in. Uh, you know, like new condition. It was open. The The package of crayons wasn't open. I thought this was actually a really cool thing. Uh, Andy Warhol stuff sells very well. He's a very well-known pop artist from uh, the 60s and the 70s. He did some stuff in the, in the 50s. But he's most known for the Campbell's Soup can uh, silk screens. Uh, he's pretty much like a Pablo Picasso in the art world. If you don't know who Andy Warhol is, he kind of is the one that uh, turned the corner on art as far as making uh, pop art popular, which is kind of like a, I guess, an <clears throat> no, it's not an oxymoron. What would it be? I don't know. It's the same thing, pop and popular. So uh, definitely look out for Andy Warhol stuff. If you happen to have any original Andy Warhol silk screens, definitely have those authenticated. And those could be worth thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. Um, but yeah. Uh, next up, we have this vintage antique cast iron toy car. Uh, most definitely very cool. Uh, we got Christine Chariz Charisma Closet. Oh, Charisma. Jeez, I'm like I'm like losing it today. Christine Charisma Closet. That's actually a, a mouthful there. Uh, Adam's X Boy said, Chris, uh, I do a live stream wrestling interview show on my YouTube channel on Wednesdays. I'd love to have you drop some knowledge. What's the best way to contact you? Uh, that's actually a very good question. I thought about making a new email address just for those kind of questions. Um, I'm on Instagram at Thrift Shop Hustler. You can PM me there and uh, you can contact me there. Um, I'm also on Facebook. And stuff like that but probably the best way is to contact me either on uh, probably Instagram at thrift shop hustler and stuff like that and that's probably the best way yeah thank you man I appreciate that that'd be fun so we have this antique cast iron toy car this actually sold for 15 bucks uh, I don't know the whole detail on this this isn't what this wasn't one of my listings though uh, it looks like there might have been some repair job done here on the steering wheel and as you can see here uh, these things are actually cast iron toys have actually been reproduced a lot in the 80s and the 90s so uh, I'm not an expert at cast iron toys at all um, that's probably one of the areas maybe next year I'll dive into this year was glass and ceramics uh, maybe next year I'll, I'll make a note of that to start diving into the cast iron realm um, this is a little bit before my time you know there's a lot of older gentlemen that love this kind of stuff and uh it's not my wheelhouse. Is this worth $15? Probably more. Yeah. You know, like, but I don't know if it's authentic. You know, I don't know the history, the story, the company or anything like that. But this just goes to show you there's amazing deals at the shop uh, at our eBay store. So definitely go down there and check that out. Uh, next up, we have this Arthur Rosenfield Longevity Tai Chi. The only reason why I'm showing you guys this, I don't show you guys the DVDs normally. And I actually showed you a pretty good amount of DVDs and videos and media today. Uh, like I said, 95% of DVDs are junk. When you find karate stuff, uh, Tai Chi, karate, not samurai stuff, not like samurai movies, but like martial arts. Let's say martial arts. That's what I meant to say. When you find martial art DVDs, definitely look them up because some of them are actually worth a pretty good amount of money, especially if you can get sealed ones. Uh, this stuff is always found at Goodwills, always found at garage sales. For some reason, people just dump these. There's a lot of them that are worth over 20 bucks sealed. You can buy them for a dollar. You can buy them for two dollars. That's pretty good ROI. Uh, so my pro tip, and the only reason why I'm showing you this this auction, because it's not really like a, a glamorous auction or listing, I should say, is look out for martial art DVDs. They sell very well. There you go. There's some more knowledge for you. Uh, next up, we have this Coach Purse, a Swing Pack Legacy Coral Leather. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is uh, I think the the market for coach bags has dropped dramatically over the last five years. Uh, it used to be a thing of, oh my God, I got a coach purse. That's not the case anymore. Um, 
they have lots of not wholesalers but they got lots of outlet stores that sell these at discounted prices they crank these out now like crazy um, don't get excited when you see Co coach unless it's like super brand new this is another brand that's highly counterfeited so be careful of that always look at stitching and I think coach for the most part has those little uh, uh, things in here can't see it on this one this is a little one anyways but I'm just saying just be warned you know like coach coach bags and purses and things aren't what they used to be so um, yeah I guess that's the main takeaway for this one uh, next up we have this Roseville pottery wine wine white rose single how do they get wine in white I guess it's close I guess there's just exchange the T for the N and that's where I got it uh, Roseville stuff Roseville pottery look out for it this was um, very common in the 50s and the 40s and the 30s Roseville USA I actually got a few things to say about this real quick if you guys know nothing about pottery in Roseville uh, Roseville's out of Ohio so you know if you're in Ohio look out for this stuff if you're in Ohio you probably know about this stuff uh, Roseville this stuff was sold very commonly at flower shops convenience stores back in the 40s 30s 50s and uh, a lot of these kind of broke over the years and the, the the market has gone down a lot in the last five years from my research but this stuff is very still sells very well make sure it doesn't have any cracks or hairline fractures the crackling's okay because that's just part of the age uh, but any flea bites, chips, cracks, repairs is going to dramatically decrease value on any Roseville pottery. Uh, the blues and the greens are probably the most common colorways. The browns and the golds is where the big money's at. So definitely look out for those. And another pro tip, um, they actually, in the 80s, in the 90s, I think, were reproducing Roseville stuff out of China or Japan. Uh, when you see Roseville on the bottom... Make sure it says USA somewhere on the bottom. That was one of the sideways of Chinese and Japanese imports getting away from copyright was just putting Roseville and not putting the USA. They still do that kind of weird stuff this day, to this day, uh, sidestepping copyright laws, uh, you know, intellectual property, IP laws. But a legitimate Roseville is going to say USA on the bottom. And it's always going to have a number on the bottom for the most part. I don't want to say always, for the most part. Uh, that number is going to tell you the style number. That's what makes these things so beautiful is that you can actually look these up all day long on eBay. You look up Roseville, you look up the number, and if it's got a dash, like this one has a dash 6, that means the dash 6 means that it's 6 inches tall. Um, there's also uh, sets, and so you might see a dash 1, and it doesn't mean it's a 1 inch Thing. it just means that it's part of this particular set you know the whole set will say 146-1 so uh, like I said I got into ceramics and glass this year big time uh, Roseville's got to be one of my favorite pottery uh, the big money is with like Weller and Van Briggle and like I said I can do a whole show just on Roseville pottery alone and you guys you guys that are in the chat can probably tell that I really love this stuff I do I would collect this stuff if uh, I had the time and the, and the space and the, and the things because we've gotten in a pretty good amount of this stuff in the shops and it just sits. Uh, we did take a best offer for 40 something on this one, which is pretty, pretty good. And so, uh, like I said, I, this stuff is, you know, I would definitely start collecting it because I think the, the market is such at a low spot right now that buying these pieces is, 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 is it's not a, it's a pretty good investment. This is not financial advice, but I'm saying like, pottery in mint condition roseville weller it's pretty good pretty good investment uh black crystal dice says i have roseville four years i don't know what that is i don't know what a four year is i think that's where you say four years four years uh christine charisma closet says i sell vintage coats shoes sell instantly good to know for sure awesome so I love I love Roseville pottery. It's it's it's, it's one of my favorite things to, to research and collect and learn about. Uh, next up we have these Cabbage Patch Kids from 1985. This is a redhead yarn, green eye girl. Uh, if this thing was actually in the box, it would probably go for a hundred to two hundred dollars. It was loose. Don't get too excited when you see vintage Cabbage Patch Kids, though. You know the craze was the whole thing in 1983, 1984, 1985. 
Um, a lot of these things are beat up, and there's a good uh, shot of the Xavier Roberts 1985 tag. You see the 1985 in there. Also, look at the Tush tag right here. This one says 1982. Uh, the butt mark will tell you, you know, will will zero in pretty much on the date. Uh, that's not true for everything. Uh, Xavier Roberts, if you really want to really get depressed, and <laughs> I hate to say this, if you really want to go down the rabbit hole on Cabbage Patch Kids, look up the Xavier Roberts documentary. Uh, the TLDR on that is he pretty much stole this idea from a lady who was doing these uh, like at flea markets and totally became a millionaire off of her idea, her designs. And uh, they ended up selling out of court like like years later. I think she like died of some sort of uh, cancer or leukemia or something like that. So I don't think she saw any of that money before she died. It was a long court battle. So uh, I have zero respect for Xavier Roberts after watching this documentary. Um, he's like a very shrewd businessman. And if you guys have never heard this story before, I highly suggest going and looking this up. It is a crazy, crazy, crazy piece of collectible history so uh, uh like i said let's get back into the the cabbage patch thing for the most part look look at the hands if the hands are dirty you usually don't want to get it uh, unless they're originals <clears throat> and uh you know just just make sure you can actually clean up the faces with some uh, uh magic eraser so usually the faces are going to be pretty dirty you can clean them up with some magic eraser don't rub too hard on the 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 airbrushed cheek elements or the eyes. I think the eyes are silk screened on there. If you rub too hard, you'll 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 damage that stuff. So just be very careful. Like if you're cleaning an antique or something like that, just be very careful. Uh, if the hands are super dirty, you probably want to stay away from it. Uh, if you can find these for like five or ten bucks and they're in near mint to mint condition, that's a buy all day long. It, even in like the lower end ones. Um, uh, I think as they got older, the bodies were harder. I think the torso might have been plastic. So when you find these with a, a vinyl plastic head with the all soft body, those are the, the older ones. Uh, I could be wrong. That's just from my recollection. This sold for $34.99. And I love the photos. I want to give you a little bit of insight on this. Uh, I actually got this thing to stand up. Uh, it was kind of funny to try to get this thing to stand up without falling over, without a stand. And uh, it was done, and I had to take the picture real quick before I f before it fell over and I caught it. Uh, but that's just a little insight. That has nothing to do with anything other than just a piece of useless information. Uh, next up, we have the silver signed flower basket. This is a brooch pin. Uh, silver always sells very well. I always look for the marks that are on the back. Do we have a close-up of it? Yes, we do. Uh, look out for this. Uh, Cine, as you can see here, Sterling by Cine. A lot of brooches won't have marks on them. Um, I can I can imagine how many solid gold brooches have gone through Goodwill or have gone through estate sales or have gone well not estate sales they pretty much know what they're doing for the most part. Um, garage sales that have been like solid gold or solid silver that people just they don't see a mark so they figure that it's uh, that it's not gold or silver. But anyways, look for the look for the word sterling on any of the brooches. Uh, any ser sterling brooch under ten dollars is usually a buy unless it's smaller, like a small one. Um, so if you don't see any any kind of hallmarks about the manufacturer, if you see sterling on any anything and it's a reasonable price, definitely pick it up. Just know that you know there are some fakes out there. Uh, bring a magnet. A magnet test is probably one of the best things you can do. Carry around if you're going to if you're like very if you're a professional reseller which I assume if you're watching this video, you pretty much are. Uh, this is a very niche subject. Um, always have a magnet with you, usually a stronger earth magnet. You can buy them for like $10 on eBay jewelry magnets. And if this thing sticks like crazy to a magnet, you know it's not going to be uh, silver or gold. Uh, silver does have some magnetic qualities to it, but it's very... It's not, it's not like it's going to stick right to it instantly. So that's a whole other video in itself. Uh, if you want to see a video on how to determine if your jewelry is fake or not right off the bat, definitely leave a comment below or click the like button for sure. Uh, next up, we have this long, ch long, sh I want to say long champ, but it's not long champ. It's like long schnip Paris purse. This is alligator. This is faux. It's a print. It's not actual real alligator. It's actually printed uh, on like a kind of like a canvasy thing. 
I've never heard of this company before. If you're if you're a lady out there that has heard of this, I, you could you could be a man these days, I guess, too, and know about this stuff. I guess uh, I know about this stuff now. Uh, Longchamp Paris. If you've ever heard of this, I'm probably pronouncing. I'm going to say Longchamp because it's just easier for me to say. Uh, if you've heard of this brand before, let me know. This is the first time I've ever came across this stuff. I've never heard this stuff before, uh, for sure. Uh, Adam Exploit says, I sent you an, an IG message. Cool, thank you. Uh, Adams also says, I'm trying to learn jewelry. I hate selling clothes, sterling, 925, Hallmarks, etc. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can get a magnet at Harbor Freight. Inexpensive reminds me they have coupons today. <laughs> Harbor Freight. That's where I got that, uh, my bench, my workbench. If you've ever seen, uh, videos, my vlog videos, that thing took like two hours to put together. Jeez Louise. Uh, next up we have this Monolo Blancnik. I don't even, I'm probably pronouncing this thing wrong too. I've made a joke before that saying like every shoe or everything should just be called like Bob 004. So that's just like so easy. Like, oh, next up we have this Bob 182 shoe. And then it's more easy than trying to pronounce like a lot of these French and uh, Italian <laughs> names. Uh, anyways, this uh, Manolo, Manolo, Blacknick. I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm just going to end this. Hope you guys had a great uh, show. I don't know what yeah, I hope you guys had a great show. I had a great show. If you enjoyed this video, definitely click the like button. I really appreciate it. Click the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Uh, if you learn anything, I want to know. Leave in the comments below. Uh, definitely click the like button. Click the bell for notifications. And I hope everyone has an amazing day. And uh, happy Memorial Day. And we'll see you next time. Take care.